Hi guys and welcome to another episode of the podcast. Today we have a very special guest and I saw, I know I say this all the time but every single guest is very special but we have Adam with us today. We've been trying to do this podcast for a very long time but due to the time difference it wasn't working but it's finally working now and Adam is also an online coach, online fitness transformation specialist and he helps these workouts to drop 10 kgs of body fat in 90 days. Hello Adam, how are you today? Indeed, I do. Hello. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. I know it's like really late for you. So thank you for being here and for making the time, like the time difference. I think for you now it's like 9 p.m. And here's like it is 9 p.m. PM. It is 9 p.m. It's dark, it's cold, yeah. it's winter. But we're here. We're here for the grind. <laughs> we're here and we're gonna talk about something very important for you guys and for everyone, for all of us, because we feel like this is a topic that have, we have been discussing that is a common struggle that our clients are having right now. And also with all the people that we see on social media and people that we talk to you guys on Instagram, Facebook all the time. And this is something we hear from you guys. So we thought we need to address this right now. And that topic is comparison. And we're going to talk about exactly how comparison is killing your fitness progress. Because we as coaches feel like this is something that can truly hold you back. And obviously this is something that we have also experienced ourselves. I don't know about you, Adam, but I've that you know, I used to compare myself so much to other girls online, especially on Instagram. I will see, you know, looking amazing, especially with bodybuilders. Bodybuilders have like such an amazing physique. And I used to mm. compare myself to them so, so much to the point that I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like I need to unfollow these girls because it's getting too much. But what about you? Like, tell us about one of your experiences or experience that maybe you used to compare yourself to someone else. Yeah, I've always used to compare myself. And I still do, really, um, just in different ways at the moment. Um, but it, it used to be a lot more toxic than it actually is mm -hmm. now. So, like, when I first got into the gym, um, I was very skinny, very small, very kind of weak. And the first gym I got into was a gym in London. Um, and it was just full of massive guys. And just even going in there, I didn't, I wasn't even following any kind of... Um, fitness accounts at the time but just being around that sort of that group of people just makes you feel like you don't belong there you know and it's it's something I have with my clients at the moment especially like the in-person people when you're wanting to like go into a free weight the free weight zone or something and it's it's kind of like off limits to a lot of people because of the people that are in there look so I don't know professional yeah. and so big and everything and it's like oh, I can't go in there because I don't look like them. And you instantly compare yourself, even though, you know, they're in a completely different league to anyone. If they're like been doing it for years and years and years or um, and, and you're completely new to it or they're just like maybe on some drugs or anything like that. Um, it's just a dangerous way to go if you're doing it in a toxic way. Now it's slightly different because you can use comparison in a good way, I think. Um, and that's why I think that's the rope we need to kind of steer towards because it's everywhere at the moment, especially with Instagram and everything like that. Like you, you, you can't really get away from it, get away mm -hmm. from comparison. I don't know if you still feel it now. Yeah. I feel like social media makes it easier for us to compare ourselves to other people because, you know, social media people, we just post all the highlights. That's what we have, like the highlight on the, your stories and you just post the good things, like the good things that you want people to see, the great days, the happy days, the successful mm -hmm. days, but we don't really talk about, or we don't really see too much, or maybe now a little bit, yes, but not before, you know, those days that are not too nice. When you just started with your fitness journey, you didn't look the way you look now. And yeah, it can be so easy to compare yourself. And also something that you mentioned, like if you're new and then you go to a gym, it can be so intimidating and so scary to walk to that freight weight station or even just showing up to the gym and then you see everyone or all the girls wearing the crop tops, especially for girls, wearing crop tops, wearing shorts and them looking so confident and you feel like, mm, I don't belong here. That feeling of I don't belong here, like I don't look like them. I don't know how you use the machines like them. I don't know how to use equipment. And like that can truly hold someone back from even getting started because they're going to feel like, what's the point of me going to the gym if I don't know how to use that machine? Something so simple, but we have to remember that we are beginners. Like as a beginners, Sorry about the noise. As beginners, like obviously we don't know, no, we know nothing. That's how we start. Like we were beginners once. We are all beginners one time in our life. We, with whatever we do, you have to start as a beginner and then you can be more like intermediate and then advanced and all of that. And something else that I think it's happening right now with my own clients is them comparing themselves with people in the group. 
like with other clients. And I think that's something because you see someone else's transformation and then you think like, I'm also, you know, in the same program, I've been working with you for so many, you know, three months or whatever the time is. And I just, I'm not looking like that girl. I'm not making that much progress. But I feel like something that we have to remember is that we all, like every fitness journey is so unique. We are all so unique and like we cannot compare ourselves to everyone because my fitness journey, it's completely different to yours. Your fitness journey is completely different from everyone else. And there's so many factors that we forget to take into, into consideration, like your lifestyle, your genetics, your the things that you do on a daily basis. There's just so many things. But what do you have to say about that? Like when people compare about with other girls in the group, like in your maybe with your own clients comparing themselves to each other. Mm, yeah the, they do and it's it's totally normal i think because you know especially when you're in such close proximity with other people they know they're doing similar workouts because they've got the same coach they know they're getting similar training they feel like they're failing i think that's where it comes into it it's like they they see people do really really well and then they think that they're not putting enough effort in or they're doing something wrong and that means that they're failing but like you said you know everyone shares the highlights right and so do we i guess in terms of like online coaches, we share people's highlights. Like we share our clients' highlights. We share their massive wins. But like something I say to all of my clients is that, yeah, okay, like that's your massive goal. That's where we want to be. We want to lose, I don't know, 40 kg, whatever. But let's focus on one kg at a time. And that's what the other clients don't see as well. Like they don't see the conversations that you have with a certain client one-to-one being like, let's lose one kg okay sick you've lost one kg that took x number of weeks now let's go to the next one and then it's just a massive snowball effect from that into wow that's a massive win for people that don't see those chats it's like oh they've suddenly you know they've suddenly lost all this weight or they've suddenly maxed out got a huge squat or anything they don't see that build up and it's similar it's the same as people just sharing their own wins on instagram it's like you know yeah you're doing really well but you're not going to be doing really well all the time and you don't mm-hmm. see the background. You don't see the the duck legs under the water that are just kicking, you know. You only see the the floating bit, the nice floating bit at the top. Yeah, that's a really good point. I feel like the chat is like pretty much, like you said, like Instagram. They see the highlights, they see that before and after that success, but they don't see the hard work that is going. Or they don't know like the commitments that some people have to make or have to do to get to that point. They don't know what's going on behind the screen because we always just see the nice picture but we don't see yeah the behind the screens and then that's something to remember as well like like I mentioned before like every journey is so different and I think something else that can hold you back or something that comparing can do to you is that you set unrealistic expectations for yourself unrealistic standards because you look at that girl or that guy and then you're like I want to have that body I want to look exactly like that girl I want to have the same shoulders the same legs and the same whatever but maybe your genetics maybe your body type won't allow you to have that body even if you work really really hard It's just the way your muscles and your bones are built. Maybe you're not able to look that way. And that can really Mm. discourage someone from keep going with the fitness journey because in their mind, they might be like, you know, I'm not looking like that girl. I'm not making that much progress. I'm such a failure. What's the point of me continuing? I'm just going to give up right now. I'm just going to stop. And then they go back to square one and it's like the same cycle. They try a little bit and then they go back. They try a little bit and they go back. I see this all the time. And it's so sad because is the only reason why they're stopping is because they compare themselves comparison yeah. and nothing else exactly i've had so many people come to me saying that they gave up because they thought it wasn't for them they thought the exercise wasn't for them because they weren't making the right progress i've had people say that they started a program didn't see the results that other people were getting so started a different program and then did the same thing like spent like two weeks on each program and then of wow. course they didn't improve because you know you're not <laughs> You're not improving in anything. You're just kind of changing up. You're starting a load of programs. We're not actually developing. And then from there, it's like, I've tried all this. I've been doing it. Like the the volumes there, I've been doing it for months and months and months and nothing's happening. Like, of course, nothing's happening. But when you're in that moment, when you're panicking, being like, oh, nothing's working. I need, it must be what I'm doing that's wrong rather than just like the time you stay in there it can be detrimental because you're never going to improve if you carry on just changing it up, doing random stuff, no matter how long you're doing it. You know, it's not about how kind of, it's not about what you're doing necessarily. It's kind of how long you stay in there and how long you persist on the same thing to do. You do the boring work, you get the results. Yeah. I think the problem is like people don't want to do the boring work. 
because boring yeah. is obviously boring, but it's like the things that you have to do if you want to see changes. Like if you want to get to the point, if you want to lose those 10 kgs, 20 kgs. So if you want to start building that muscle mass, you have to do the same thing every single day. Like even when you reach the goal, you have to keep doing the same thing. You have to keep counting your micros if you're doing that, or you have to keep prepping your meals, following your meal plan. You have to keep training. Like it doesn't stop when you reach that goal. And yeah, that's something also, that's another thing that I see all the time. Some people think that, you know, once I reach my goal, I'm going to be able to eat whatever I want. I'm going to be able to, you know, maybe be a, a little bit more relaxed with my meal plan and with my training, but it's like, of course you can do it, but do you want to go back to where you were before? Do you want to go back to the old you, to how you looked before? I'm sure the answer is no. So what you're doing now, you have to continue doing the same. That's why I always say like, this is a lifestyle. This is not a quick fix. This is not a quick change. This is something that you literally have to just get done all the time because the yeah. moment that you stop is a moment that you're literally going to stop seeing progress. It's the moment that you're going to go back to square one. Square, square one. And I think something else that maybe comparing yourself to too many people can do to you, it will demotivate you. Something that can happen. And we know that motivation it's not always there. Motivation comes and goes. You feel more motivated whenever you start with something new. You're like, yeah, I'm motivated. But then as time goes on and it gets, it gets boring, how you mentioned the boring thing, people feel so demotivated. And then once you start comparing yourself to other girls, either in the group or just on social media, that can even make you feel more discouraged. And then in extreme cases, it will just make you give up completely and never mm -hmm. try to do that thing again. But what's something you will recommend or what are some tips that you will tell give to someone that is maybe comparing themselves too much to other girls or to other guys i think a mindset shift of it is to you can look at the other people like that's cool that's fine but just realize that that is an end goal of someone's massively massively like long journey hard work they've put into it like yes we can strive to be that like look like a certain type of person you may not get there genetically um if you accept that that's cool but just realize that becoming is so much more exciting and just it, it like so much more um motivational than being i think mm -hmm. i think it's just like the road there is full of like ups and downs it's full of highs lows but that's what makes it exciting you know that's what makes um the journey worth it that's what makes the goal worth it as well because as soon as you get there like the goal's going to change you're going to see something else and you're going to want to get there as well and you're just going to be wanting to be in that process the whole time so i think it's about finding the enjoyment in the process rather than delaying your happiness mm. and thinking that's where i want to be and that that is the only time i'm going to be happy is when i can look like them you know because it will never come it may come for like two seconds when you get there and then it will just, it will change as quick as you get there, you know, mm -hmm. find the joy in the process, find inspiration from others, but don't delay your happiness and don't put your happiness in the other person saying that I'm, I'm like, I'm not happy within myself until I can achieve that. Know that you're doing the right things to get there and enjoy it enjoy it it's a long process it's going to take a long time there's no point being miserable because otherwise you won't stick to it i think that's one thing other things you can do is you know delete instagram or unfollow people but mm. it's everywhere you know it's kind of rather than trying to get it away i think you, like bending it and manipulating it to use it to your advantage is is probably the best way to do it nowadays because it's very very hard to get away from it if you know what i mean yeah and i like what you mentioned about like don't wait to make progress to be happy like don't wait until reach a specific goal to be happy i feel like happiness is something that you decide like if you want to be happy today you can be happy but that counts that's a decision that you have to make for yourself like every single day if you wake up telling yourself like today is going to be a great day today i'm going to feel happy today is going to be an exciting day then you're going to have that exciting day and that happy day like even if something unexpected happens you're just going to remind yourself like everything is going to be fine you know just stay positive because I, I feel like having that positive mindset changes things so, so much. But if you feel like once I reach my goal, only then I'll be happy. Once I get this target, only then I'll be happy. That can be, that can take months, years. I don't yeah. know. That can take a long time. And like, why do that to yourself? Why do you want to wait that long? Decide to be happy right now because you're the only one that can make that decision for yourself. And you're the only one that can make yourself feel happier. No one else can make you feel happy. Maybe people, yes, they can, they can make you laugh and whatever. But if you truly want to be happy on the inside, 
that's only a decision you can make by yourself. And something you mentioned earlier, but I really want to want you to explain a little bit more. You mentioned that you can use comparison in a good way. How will you use mm. comparison in a good way to help you with your progress? I think it's just changing again. It's just changing the mindset to comparison to inspiration. I think because you know you're not ever gonna be you're not ever gonna be put down from someone above you. You know, like the people that put you down is always gonna be the people below you, even though you're putting yourself down by looking at these other people thinking I'm never going to be there. Use it, use them as inspiration and look into them. Don't just look into their kind of like what they post. Don't just look into that one thing that you see and be like, Oh, I'm never going to be like that. Follow them, go into them. They've probably got a story. Hopefully they share it. So look for the story. You know, people are vulnerable. People like being vulnerable. So find their, find the vulnerability in them and see if you can relate to that rather than finding all the things that you can't relate to them. So without kind of going in, uh, without going off on a rant or anything, mm -hmm. look into them, find them, and then find things that you can compare yourself with and relate to rather than things that are just out of your control right now. Like, of course, we're not going to get to there really, really quickly, but maybe you can find something that they went through that was similar to you. If that's the case, great, keep doing it. If you can't, if you know that they're just in a completely different like lead to you, like as in they've gone through different experiences, completely different person, then get it gone. Like bin them off, find someone else that you can compare yourself to. It's always good having something to look up to, but something that is attainable and something that from someone who has come from somewhere that you have been or you are at the moment, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I like that, like switching that comparison to for motivation instead of being like, mm. I wouldn't say afraid, but instead of being jealous or comparing yourself too much to that person, to that girl, to that guy, yeah look at them as motivation like if that's something that you want to do if that's something if you really want to look like this person if you really want to be in the position of this person use them as motivation use them as your little push as your little drive and sometimes also like the mistake that we make is that we compare our chapter one with someone else's chapter 14 like we yeah. don't know how long they've been doing this thing maybe that person has been doing this for the past 10 20 years so obviously they are where they are right now because they've been doing this for a very long time and if you're only just getting started with your journey it's going to be impossible for you to be like that person. It's going to be impossible for you to have that consistency, to have that discipline, to have that motivation. So yeah, again, don't use comparison, change it into motivation. And I think something else that can help you guys to stop comparing yourself too much. It's to not just set realistic goals for yourself, but set a specific goals for you, your body type, your lifestyle, and just your unique body like you're unique everything because sometimes again you want to have dreams that or you want to achieve goals that are very unrealistic you have very high expectations for yourself which it can be good and a good you know sometimes it can be good but if you're not being realistic how is that going to help you because you're never going to reach that goal then you're going to get upset then you're going to get frustrated then you're going to start crying then you're going to get angry because you're not reaching those goals and that's just going to take you nowhere so whatever goals you set for yourself make sure they're realistic make sure they are for you not for your sister sorry or for your friend or for whatever they have to be specifically for you that's why you have to be the one setting those goals based on you knowing what that girl is doing or that guy is doing or that person is doing whatever I want to achieve it's because I want to do it it's because I truly want to get there and I know I want to get there if I put in the work if I put in the time I just have to get it done so I think yeah that would be like one of my biggest tips set realistic goals for yourself don't just set any goals but set something is extremely extremely specific and what's something mm. else you will suggest I think for me, it's just, yeah, like setting realistic goals, using them as my motivation. But for me, it's it's more like looking, like changing the negatives into positives because there's so much hate, I think, at the moment. And there's, like, especially around this, like, yes, comparison is a bad thing, but we're so often, like, we're so inclined to blame the other person, to blame the person who's in that situation, who's who's there, who's made it and is posting mm -hmm. what they've made, you know? yeah you're comparing yourself to them but they've been where you are or worse or anything like that and they put in the work to get there okay so it's it's less about kind of like demonizing those people i mean yes maybe they're setting unrealistic expectations of people if they are and they're lying about it that's a different story but to look at them in a in a hateful way only kind of 
it, it doesn't affect them it affects you more than that and it will get you frustrated and it will get you more kind of pent up and make you not want to do it make you not enjoy the process again it's all about enjoying the process viewing this as a positive experience viewing things as motivation rather than comparison um getting better in yourself rather than using your insecurities to fight other people and demonize other people and then upset you and get you frustrated because as soon as you're frustrated and as soon as you don't enjoy the process you'll stop because you mm-hmm. don't enjoy doing something that you don't like doing mm-hmm. we want to find the joy in it we want to find the kind of um the comfort in what we're doing knowing that it's okay if we don't get to that where that person is they've put in the effort they've worked really really hard I'm going to do the same thing and just see where I get. And then hopefully I can inspire people like me in a few years time. Hopefully they won't be looking at me comparing themselves to me, but they'll see something in me that I can like relate to that I can be inspired by. And then they follow in my footsteps. So like you said, you're comparing your chapter one to their chapter 27 or whatever, whenever they're, whenever you're on your chapter 27, just know that there are going to be people in chapter one as well. Yeah. And something else that you mentioned, but I just want to apologize for the background noise because my boyfriend is being extremely loud today, which is annoying. So I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> like, oh, you're making so much noise. But I think something, <laughs> something that you mentioned, it's about insecurities. And I think that's something we have to work on because we all have insecurities. And sometimes mm. when we have that, or when we feel like we're getting jealous about something or someone and we have that insecurity or we compare ourselves to something, it's because you're insecure about something. And maybe instead of you, yeah, instead of you using that insecurity as something that's holding you back, use that insecurity, work on that insecurity and that can help you. That's going to help you so much to grow. That's going to help you to be a better person. That's going to help you to make more progress. That's going to help you to feel more confident about yourself because once you start feeling more confident, it's going to be easier for you to make that progress. And the reason why I say this is because sometimes lacking that confidence will hold you back from going to the gym because you feel insecure or you don't know how to do the exercises. It will hold you even back from reaching out for help. Some people are so insecure about reaching out because they're afraid that that coach is going to assume something or think something about them or they're just afraid about, you know, hey, I'm really struggling to lose weight or struggling to gain muscle mass. But there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with like seeking for help. That's why we are coaches. That's why people are there like us that want to help you. So don't be afraid to reach out because that's the best thing that you can do for yourself. Get help. Get someone that has the knowledge, someone that w- truly wants to help you, someone that you can relate to. So you can start working on those things. But insecurities is something that you have to work by yourself. It has to be like a personal development thing that you want you have to do if you want to improve, if you want to get better, if you want to get to the next stage, if you want to get to that next level, because again, you are the only one that can make those changes for you. You're the only one that can get from point A to point B, even if you have coaches, even if you have people helping you, they can only help you so much. If you don't want to help yeah. yourself, if you are if you don't want to get to that next stage, it's going to be extremely, extremely hard for you to make progress. So you have to decide and you have to be the one saying, okay, I want to work on this. I want to do this and that's in, you know, whatever you're doing, because I want to feel better because I want to reach that point because I want to grow as a person. I want to work in my insecurities. And I think something else that can also help you to stop comparing yourself to other people. It's keep remembering why you even started with this journey. Why do you want to lose that body fat? Why do you want to gain more knowledge about fitness why do you want to gain muscle mass how like how does that make you feel like don't just think about the superficial goals that you want to achieve like yeah I want to look better I want to look nicer in a bikini yes that's amazing but how is that going to help you how is that going to make you or how is that going to impact your day to day how is this going to make you feel on a daily basis go a little bit deeper don't just go on the surface level of yeah I just want to look great in the bikini go really deep so you know exactly why you are doing the thing that you're doing. Because motivation, remember, it's not always there. And if you're comparing yourself to other people, that's just going to make it more challenging for you to keep going on that journey. So use your why. Remind yourself, okay, I'm, I started with this journey because this is going to make me feel better. This is going to help me be more productive at work. You know, whatever your why is, that there has to be a reason why you're doing that thing. So don't forget about that. But is there anything else that you will tell them? Any other tips that you will suggest? I think compared like relating to that, remembering your why it's like also remembering where you were like, so 
if you have started on your fitness journey and like you've made progress and it's still a case of you comparing yourself to other people just remember it it doesn't matter about them like it, it doesn't matter about where you are compared to them because you know they're in a different time they're they're on a different journey their goals are different what does matter is the comparison of you and yourself so if you look if you zoom out and you look at yourself last month and you're better either like physically mentally or emotionally any any of those things if you're better in any of those areas then you're winning like it, it just gets a bit tricky when it starts to go down so you know down by one month is cool if it starts to go down more that's when something needs to change that's when you really do actually need to be worried about it um but if you're comparing yourself to people that are just out of you know doing it for years fitness influencer whatever it's it's less productive than comparing yourself to yourself ages ago there that's the kind of only thing that matters as long as you're beating yourself last year last month last week then it's great you're happy yeah i like that and like, happy, yeah. yeah i like that like even if you only just started with your fitness journey even if it's your day one maybe you you might be asking like how can i compare myself to last week if i haven't even started well you're day one so the comparison will be you got to start it with this even if you yeah. are not physically making any changes just yet because it's only day one or week one or even week two the main thing is that you you're doing something for yourself yeah you gave the first step of working with a coach or just going to the gym or starting with a new meal plan or whatever you're doing but just that might not be enough for you right now or might not seem enough for you right now but trust me getting started it's usually probably one of the most challenging things to do once you're there it's a little bit easier it's not easy but it's a little bit easier but I feel like getting started it's always always so hard because maybe mm -hmm. your life is really busy right now maybe you have too much going on maybe you just yeah you just don't have time <laughs> you don't have time even though there's always time but you don't have time to train you don't have time to go to the gym to make time to prep your meal so just getting started it's a huge step so just be happy for yourself or say like thank you Danny or thank you to myself or even just getting started even for just reaching out for help even for doing something for myself but yeah I feel like we we are often so hard in ourselves like we just mm we're not nice enough to ourselves. We always like criticizing ourselves. We look at pictures of ourselves and be like, oh, I don't like the way I look. I don't like the way my hair looks. I don't like the way my face, my makeup or whatever. But like, just try to be nice to yourself. If you're not nice to yourself, how do you expect other people to be nice to you? If you're not feeling mm. good about yourself, how do you expect to feel good on a daily basis? Just also make that little change, that little switch on your brain to like, today I want to be nice to myself because I deserve that you know I'm the only one that can make me feel happy I'm the only one that can remind myself that yes I can do it I'm strong I'm powerful and that that's honestly something I tell myself every single morning like when I wake up I like to tell myself like some like positive affirmations because I truly feel like that helps I, and I truly believe that that works so much and starting your day with those positive affirmations it makes a huge difference if you're listening to this or watching this I suggest you do. I challenge you to try because it makes a huge difference, but it has to be done every single day. Don't just do it. What do you it. do? I don't do that. I, I don't really? do it. What, how do you do it? Try it. So every time I wake up, I honestly don't look at my phone. Like that's the last thing I look. I don't look at my phone. I just wake up, get up, go to the bathroom, brush my teeth. And then I literally just look at myself in the mirror and be like, today, it's going to be a wonderful day. Today, I'm feeling amazing. Today, I'm feeling excited. Like, I know we're going to make today a great day. Like, I'm getting, you know, I'm reaching that stage that I just want to, you know, I'm reaching that success that I want to reach. I'm working really hard towards my goal. And just keep reminding myself, like, I'm not there just yet, but I'm working towards that. I am not where I want to be just yet, but I know I'm putting in the work to get to that place. So, obviously, you have to be, I think you have to be realistic with what you're saying. Like, if you're someone who wants to have more money, you know, I want to be a millionaire. If you tell yourself, I am a millionaire right now, that's just BS. Don't tell yourself BS because, like, that BS ring on your brain is going to be like, ding dong, <laughs> like, you're talking bullshit. You know, <laughs> what are you saying? But if you're saying, like, I'm working towards that thing, like, I'm one step closer to that goal, I think that's just going to make you feel a little bit better. But yeah, do it, Adam. Trust me, that's going to make you feel better. That just gives you that little something on your day and you just, you feel good after you feel good. And like, even if something happens later that day, that maybe it's not making you feel good. You just have to go back to, okay, I told myself this morning, I'm going to have a good day. So whatever happened, maybe it's not a nice situation, but I'm going to try my best to stay positive. And I'm going to mm -hmm. try my best just to be happy and to continue doing what I'm doing. But yeah, try it. 
try it and let me know how it goes <laughs> i will i'll give it a go yeah, but yeah it's, it's tough it's tough doing that it's tough giving mm -hmm. yourself the credit of it because it's so easy so easy to look at the bad things because i guess that's where we grow as humans isn't it it's like we always want to improve and it's like we only improve from the struggles and we only improve from the bad things that's all that's what we're looking for like we're always looking for the next thing to improve on i feel like it's really tough to give yourself that credit and it's tough to even just like in the morning of all times just to be kind to yourself like no one yeah. ever does it no one ever does it so i think it's really really important to to create that space and to actually force yourself to do it because i'm sure when once you do it once you get it it's 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 easier you've opened the door and now you can do it so it's like i can carry on doing it. it's just that first thing like you said taking the first step in your fitness journey is always the hardest one yeah making being nice to yourself for the first time is always the hardest bit but then it it does get easier yeah it does get easier it's it's gonna take time like it's not gonna take one day or one week or even one month it has to be just something that you do consistently every single day mm. like even if you forget let's say with the affirmations even if you forget to do it in the morning, you still have the rest of your day to look in the mirror or just tell yourself, you know, whatever you want to tell yourself. But it has to be something that you need to be consistent with, just like your fitness journey, just like anything that you do in life and your career and your relationship, anything you have to put in the work every single day. If you want to reach that point, you have to do the boring work, exactly what we mentioned earlier. If you want to reach that point, yes, it's boring, but that boring is going to take you somewhere. So as long as you're taking those steps that, you know, by, by me doing these things, I'm going to reach that goal in the next few months or the next few years or whatever. Just keep doing that. Keep working hard and be patient. Be patient because nowadays we're so impatient. And that's yeah. something I feel like patience is more like a skill that we have to learn now because it's not easy at all. And just being patient, it's going to make you different from, trust me, it's going to make you different from other people. And it's going to help you way more to reach that goal because we are so impatient people are so impatient but if you are that patient you are on that next level you are trust me you're like up here because you have that patience you have that skill on you and that's gonna take you places because you will be patient enough to wait for that work to flourish and to see the growth of your hard work but thank you so exactly. much yeah but is, but is there anything else you want to tell them any other tips before we go no, I think that's it. Yeah, I think just patience is the is probably the number one thing to take away from this because it's, it's when it gets hard is when most people stop. So yeah. if you can just stick through it when that's hard and you can carry on through that and then it it will get easier after that, you'll be in a better place than 70% of people because most people, that is when people stop. That's when people give up. That's when people go backwards. So as long as you can be patient, stick yourself through the hard times in order to enjoy the good times, you'll be laughing. Yeah. And just a quick recap of a few tips that we tell you guys, set some realistic goals for yourself, your life, your body, your genetics, your everything. Um, Limit your social media exposure. If you have to delete your Instagram, do it. Or just delete the accounts that are just making you feel a little bit too insecure. Work on your insecurities, mm. seek some support, practice some self-compassion, remember your why, change that comparison to motivation because it's going to be a huge, huge change. And thank you so much, Adam, for being here. Please follow him on his social media. He has some amazing content about fitness, mindset, nutrition. So make sure to follow him. His social media is at patient underscore fitness underscore. So that's at patient underscore fitness underscore. He's Adam Patient, patience, <laughs> patient, online fitness transformation specialist. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you found this helpful, please share it on your social media and tag me or Adam at Daniel Del Carpio. Until next time. And as I always say, don't ever stop believing in yourself. Ciao.